Welcome scientists to chapter four, lesson three. I'm Cynthia here to guide you through your last part of this unit. Our goal today is to better understand the patterns of when and where natural hazards happen so that we can start to design ways to stay safe and keep damage low. Remember that a hurricane destroyed the Wildlife Protection Organization's offices? Well, we are gonna be working on ways that they can protect their new building from damage by natural hazards. In our last lesson, we learned that meteorologists can predict weather-related hazards. How is it possible for meteorologists to predict these natural hazards? Remember, they can do this because they know there's a pattern to the places where natural hazards happen, and that means they can predict what types of natural hazards might happen in a certain place. Why is it important for meteorologists to predict future natural hazards? At this time, if you want, you can always pause the video and write down your answer. You can say your answer to the screen or someone near you, but remember that's always an option for you. It's important for meteorologists to predict these hazards because no matter where you live, meteorologists then can help people get prepared for natural hazards so that they stay safe. Today, we will focus on solutions that allow people to stay safe. Take some time right now to think about this question. Once meteorologists are able to predict a natural hazard, what do you think are some things people can do to prepare? You can always write your answer, pause the video, or say your answer out loud if you'd like to. One idea to think about is that some people think the best idea would be to build all the structures, every structure in a certain city, to withstand hurricanes, blizzards, and lightning strikes. That way everyone would be safe. However, it's very expensive to prepare every building for all three natural hazards. Since we observe that most places don't have all three natural hazards, we will focus on making a model structure that can survive a hurricane. Today, you will take on the role of an engineer as you plan, build, and test model structures that will not be damaged by a hurricane. I'll model some of these structures by simulating a hurricane's heavy rain and strong winds. When people prepare buildings for natural hazards, they need to consider cost and materials. Like real building experts, we will also have limited materials. This picture here shows you what was in the science kit, but I'm going to be improvising with what I have near me here at home. A big warning, warning to you all. First, you're going to watch a video with some different models and I'll be testing them. Then you can always talk with an adult about trying your own experiment. If you wanna try, just make sure you wait all the way until the end of this entire lesson. Then you can replay the video and follow the steps that happen in the next few minutes. Before we start testing them, we have to make sure we know what our structure needs to do. So this is what our hurricane structure needs to be ready to do. Number one, hold a penny above water. The penny cannot be underwater, but it can get wet. If the penny falls off the structure, it will be underwater. Our structure needs to stay upright during wind and rain. If the structure gets blown across the table, that's fine, but it can't fall over. Number three, stand up by itself. This means it's not taped to the table or counter or whatever surface you're working on. And the last one, it says fit in a plastic container. This is something we'll use when testing the rain. It'll look a little bit different if you are somewhere else and we might even try it outside if you want to. Stay tuned in the next video as we build and test the finished hurricane structures to see if they can withstand hurricane force, wind, and rain. See you then. Welcome back from trying and testing out our models. We are gonna spend a little bit of time now thinking back and reflecting on what we noticed. Which features do you think were the most effective at withstanding both wind and rain? 
How do you know that those particular features were effective? You can think back to things like the roof, or as I explained, what parts were taped on. Uh, maybe think about the posts and if there were certain angles that helped. Think about which made it really the strongest. Even with designs that did what they needed to do, there was still a lot of variation or a lot of change in how they performed. For example, some structures may lean, but not fall over, and some pennies may move around, but not fall off in the rain. Which structure was not effective at withstanding wind and rain? And why do you think this one didn't work well? Now is a great time to pause your video, write down your answer, or say your answer out loud. Here is your key concept for this part of our lesson. People can design solutions to prevent damage caused by natural hazards. We've demonstrated that there are ways to design a structure so that there's less damage from strong winds and rain of a hurricane. In addition to coming up with our own designs, we've read about solutions to the problems caused by weather-related natural hazards in dangerous weather ahead. This all shows that people can design solutions to prevent damage caused by natural hazards. Because we know some of these ideas will work, I will send some of them to the Wildlife Protection Organization. The WPO can then use the ideas we learned from designing structures that can withstand hurricane damage when they rebuild their office building so that it is safer when another hurricane happens. Just a reminder, if people figure out, like we did, a pattern of where natural hazards occur, then they can predict what natural hazards are likely to happen nearby. Then they can design effective solutions to prevent damage caused by those hazards. This way, people can prepare for and stay safe from natural hazards. Here is your lesson challenge. The first part is, Talk to an adult. Try to make your own structure if you want to. Just make sure you're very safe with all the materials and do not try this by yourself. If you're unable to do that right now, then no problem. Here is a reflection question you can answer before our next lesson. Why is it useful to be able to predict what the weather will be like in the future? In other words, how does it help people to know what the weather is going to be like the next day or maybe the next month? All right, great job in lesson three. I will see you all for our final lesson in lesson four.